Let's go deep. <clears throat> so find a comfortable seated position so we can still ourselves for a moment, but in the upright so that we can be present. Think of your spine like an antenna. It doesn't work as well when it's, you know, when we're not actively reaching it up to the sky. So imagine it like a circuit connector between the, the earth and whatever it is we perceive above us. If you close your eyes and you, and you just kind of look up in your mind, close it with your eyes closed, what do you see up there? Like, what do you feel? What do you sense above you? <clears throat> One way to think of it is that every day we're always trying to get somewhere and our attention kind of gets spread out on the horizontal. We're, we're seeing where we're going. When we stop, we, start to, we can tune into the vertical and the vertical is very powerful. That's where depth comes from. To feel way, way up high into the sky, to feel way, way down into the earth. Depth, that's power, that's groundedness, rootedness. <clears throat> So with your attention, I want you to just reach into the earth beneath you, reach into the sky above you and just breathe. When you breathe, feel your breath vertically as though it were coming from above you. Or coming from below you. The premise of our practice is all important. If, Again, I always say this, but you need the reminder because it's so easy to default into our normal way of being. We need to change the premise from, okay, I'm going to come to yoga class because it's on the schedule. That's a, that's a flimsy, weak premise. <clears throat> and if we proceed from that place, it's gonna, our practice is going to be flimsy. When we change the whole ground floor, we just start to... Really remember. Yoga is remembering, remembering ourselves, remembering the moment. <clears throat> and one of the gateways to that, though it may sound cliche, is gratitude. Gratitude is so awesome in that way. When we start to start the ground floor with, <clears throat> thank you for this body. Thank you. Thank you that I'm healthy. Thank you that I can walk. Thank you that I can breathe. Thank you that I can even be in a peaceful place with fresh air. There's so much, there's infinite things to be thankful for. When we start to get that motor running, the gratitude motor, it really starts to go. <clears throat> and what it does is it creates a feeling of overflowing rather than sucking in. Most of us are coming from a place of needing more and we're looking for that more and our yoga can, can become like that. So think of this yoga more as a spilling over, a, a, a overflow. That's what the body is starving for, is that overflow feeling. We got used to the opposite. So just breathe with that spirit. Reversing the vacuum effect to the overflow effect. Like in Spaceballs, she's gone from suck to blow. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember that part. <laughs> feel that reverse. We want to feel that reverse from the suck to the blow. <laughs> the overflow. Overflow. 
So let's overflow into the first few postures. We're just going for that basic opening that I always like to do, just coming forward onto the hands, which may graduate to elbows or even forehead. But the feeling of it is not striving or even stretching. It's more like falling <clears throat> and just letting gravity be all the force that's needed to open up your tissues. We're not fighting it. We're just meeting it with the breath. <sighs> Sounds are welcome as if you are feeling your body and you're breathing deeply, sounds just kind of want to happen for some of us. So I, I want you to feel free to let go and melt and, and ooh and ah. We're gonna start to travel from the center slowly over towards that left leg. When I say slow, that means just slower than automatic. We all have an automatic pace. Just go a little slower than that and you're gonna feel so much more. We're still folded forward, but it's left forward. If straight forward is north, we're going northwest on this compass. And notice now where it uh, reveals itself in your body. Now what happens if we continue directly west? Don't rush it. Lean onto that hand or even that elbow. Let that right hand slide to the left. And that increases the lengthiness of going directly to the west. And then to go even further, the arm starts to float up over the head. There's a rotation there. You can almost see it in your mind's eye, the shoulder rotating around the axis of your spine. And as that arm arrives over the head and maybe even goes a little bit beyond, to me, this is a way in. It's like you're allowing yourself to reach into your chest, which on a feeling level is kind of infinite. It's not like you are a few inches across the chest and a few inches wide. You want to go beyond that to the sizeless human body. And imagine the chest cavity as big as the Milky Way galaxy. Really feel that big, massive space inside of you and your breath. <sighs> we get used to feeling small. Part of the yoga medicine is to start to open up and to start to feel bigger. <sighs> lots and lots of room inside. And now we're going to travel to the right leg. Take your time. Your right hand's going to meet the arm first. Or your right hand's going to meet the floor, rather, first. And then we're going to start to crisscross the hands as they walk slowly. When you move slow, you're saying to your body, essentially, this is important. I want to feel this. Every movement is a message. And we're over the, the right leg now, northeast on our compass. What does Northeast feel like in your body? It's a different energy. And I know we're all facing different directions actually on the earth, but let's just say that straight forward is north and we'll work from there. And then let's continue. It's like you're unwrapping a present, except you are the present. So lean into that right hand or elbow as a prerequisite to leaning directly to the east. Slide that, that left arm to the east. Create the length. Start to float that arm up over your head, bit by bit. This is the unwrapping of the present, the tapping of your deep chest cavity. Really, it's like home, that deepest place inside of you where you feel perhaps most vulnerable, most open, where you also feel the most love, where you feel itself, feeling itself.
It's like the influx point. Like if your soul was to come into your body, it would come in through this place inside of you. So it's like you're reaching towards your soul. It looks like you're reaching outward and you're reaching inward. We pay so much attention to getting the right nutrients and supplements and dietary needs and all that stuff. That's all great. But we forgot the main dietary need is this one right here. To contact the soul. <sighs> Literally think of it like food for your body. Nourishment. And we're going to come back down slowly to the middle. And we're going to arrive in the middle on the hands or on the elbows. And just let's let it balance out. Notice how different your body feels now from when we started, just by bringing in that soul touch. <sighs> it doesn't really take a lot at all to wake the body up, to activate its dormant healing powers. And that's the tinglies that we're feeling. <sighs> Good, let's go the fourth direction. We're gonna go south. So it starts by sitting up, arrive at the middle of your compass, your spine tall, that antenna into outer space. We're gonna let the hands float off the ground, pouring out of you forward. That forward reach gradually becomes an upward reach. And I just wanna stop there for a moment and reach to the sky as though your heart wants to touch whatever is up there and your arms are the connectors. Breathe into that. Erase the lines in your body that separate torso from arms, arms from hands, hands from fingers. We're dissolving all those imaginary lines, even your body from outside of your body. Erase all the lines and then start to reach those arms backwards along that back edge, brush. The hands are eventually gonna meet the earth in a soft yet powerful landing a short distance behind you. And then as though beyond your own control, the belly, the pelvis, the chest, all starts to flood forward and upward as the head relaxes back. That's good, David. Your hands hurt. Don't even leave the ground then. You're just going to, you could even, by the way, do wrists if that feels better. And just let the belly and chest and throat open up. Remember, it's not about, oh good. Yeah, you got it. So there's a difference between efforting it. When we effort it, it's like we're lifting our bodies as a dead weight. You want to imagine almost like a tsunami coming from behind you. And it's you can't control this. It's just going. Coming from a deeper place, a bigger place. Let the tsunami wash it clear. Yeah. And we're dropping back down to the seat. Let the hands move to the lap again. And let that lightness just tingle in your body again. Good. More of a whisper touch activation of your body. We're going to start to turn either direction, whichever way you feel more called. Visualize the axis of your spine and you're simply rotating around it until you start to feel the little, the little uh, feedback along your spine, whether you feel like it's in your bones or in the tissues <clears throat> around the bones or inside of the spine, which is ideal. You want to feel like we're zeroing in on the central channel of your spine, <laughs> looking gently over that shoulder, whether the eyes are open or closed. And caress it with the breath. Good. And make your journey the other side. Slow motion means slower than automatic.
just like the the spectrum of light has the visible spectrum, but light goes into infrared and ultraviolet. Light is an infinite spectrum. So is your physical body. So imagine right there at the at the most fluid levels of your body, right beyond that, the light levels of your body, if that makes sense. Everything you feel in your, bo in your body in a way is energy. It's all light. You're, when you're feeling your body, you're tuning into the ultraviolet aspects of your body, so to speak. The less physical, the less dense. In other words, to feel your body is to spiritualize your body. It's to wake up those subtle sensitivities. To, to dissolve that barrier that we feel between the physical and the spiritual. Imagine dissolving that right now so there is no separation. It's just a spectrum. Your body gets lighter and lighter and lighter into the non-physical. Let's come back to the middle. And that's why your breath is so important. Because the breath is physical, but it's also very ethereal. We're gonna come up onto our hands like we do from here and let the ankles uncross. You can go to wrists if that feels better. But basically your arms are these powerful pillars. Your bones are the strength. Your femurs are the other pillars. So we're gonna just rest, drop our weight, let the belly sag, the chest sag, let the head hang. Gravity does the work. Our bones do the supporting and all the soft stuff. Let's go. Let the breath flood in. Pulse that pelvic floor muscle. Start to wake that up. Mula Bandha, we call it in yoga. It just uh, means root lock. But think of it as a way of, of really getting that, that more earthy, juicy energy going. Even orgasmic energy of the body that are, that's based down at the pelvis. You start to draw the head up nice and slow. There's a curvature in your spine that deepens. Very simple principle here. You're just bending Bend that spine until it feels perfect. And then let the breath come in and feel it. With the pulse of that pelvic floor. And then let the head and tailbone drop together and the spine rounds the other direction. Chin towards the chest. Pelvis rounds under. So you're feeling the front side of your body squeeze and the back side lengthen but bring in the sensual aspect this is not just a mechanical thing really think of it as like you're giving your body a massage right now and you're doing it with a lot of love <sighs> that little extra ingredient of care tlc makes a huge difference and now we're going to fluctuate the spine between the two spectrums two ends of the spectrum rather belly drops head rise that peaks on an inhale and then immediately round it into an exhale. Good. Go beyond the mechanics and do it with love. So you're, you're fluctuating your spine in a way to melt away the tensions that come from not loving your body. Waves of love through your spine that are the direct medicine antidote for self-loathing. We all have some degree of that. We inherit it from our ancestry, from our parents, from our culture. Self-loathing is slowly killing us. If you're not okay with that, start loving your body through these motions. But then we want to break free. We want, we want these fluid motions of the spine to not just be up and down, but side to side and everything in between. So you're, you'll start to see that your spine is actually really dynamic if you start to open up the sides a little bit along with up and down, your head and your shoulders. Get about as wiggly as you possibly can. But again, we're not doing it to the body. 
we're using it to feel the body. So you're inside of your spine, creating more space with breath. Dissolve the rigidity. Become supple and pliable. Good. Let's come forward, drop into low spine simply by resting on the elbows, about as simple a pose as we can do here. Good. Uh, as long as it feels okay, let your pelvis and lower abdomen just rest on the ground. Does that hurt your knees? Okay. So, ah, another, another pose. It's like, uh, every pose is another access code. Where does this get us in? Which, which room in the, in the temple does this get us into? Close your eyes. Turn your gaze down the spine and see the curve of your spine in, the, in your mind's eye. See the openings in your inner belly. Pelvic bowl. And breath coming in like a cool breeze. And removing the stagnation. One little ingredient you may want to introduce, or not, is the rocking of your pelvis kind of side to side in a, in a gentle, easy breezy kind of way that helps jostle the low spine way down towards the base where, where a lot of us get stiff and stuck. It's like a lid on our life force there at the base of the spine and we're just softly unscrewing that lid. The body does not want to be pried open. It wants to be romanced and gently teased and invited open. You don't pry the petals of a flower open. You, you just shine this... The, the petals open because the sun hits it. It's just, so it's like you want to be the sunlight to your own body and just I see breaths. You're, you're bright and you're hot, but you're not prying. Now the movement out can be performed as an as a end to the posture or a continuation of the posture. Go for the ladder now. The pelvis and the belly are going to start to leave the ground. But we're not drawing any lines from one posture to the next. Smooth motion leaving the pelvis and then from the elbows progress to the hands and from the hands we walk backwards towards the heels our butts going and at that last leg of the motion that's where the, the real goods are so slow it down feel your low back the same part of the spine and torso but the back side opens and your face is going towards your lap your head doesn't even touch the floor in this one we're just rounding in curling in on ourselves imagine like a turtle shell on your back and you're retracting everything into the comfort of that shell and breathe Deep nourishing breaths into your low back sacrum. And sacrum's like the motherboard. Good, then we start to go up and back. 
And then from the upright position, we're just going to rest our hands gently on the floor behind us. And first is just relaxing. Let those the front of the thighs open up. Now, when we say thighs, we think quads and all that kind of anatomical BS. Let all that go and just, again, it's a room in your temple. Some kind of amazing space, another place inside. What is it? Anatomy aside. You can even send that pelvic reach into it too. When you do that pelvic thrust, there is an inherent oomph. There's a kind of mm, juicy energy, pelvic energy. Mm. The body loves that. Our culture shuts it down. So traveling back, ooh, sitting on the heels, and traveling over onto the hands. And as an answer to that, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Returning the toes under, but we're honoring the feet a moment. Think of your feet again as really, really big. Uh, you know a whole map for your entire body. So you're opening up the feet for a moment. The toes are turned under. We're just letting that happen. <sighs> when you breathe, your lungs are in your feet. <sighs> Feel into the earth. Reach your attention past the floor into the earth. Feel the Imagine the core of the earth, hot like the sun. Touch it. Let the knees leave the floor and the heels go to the earth. Mm. So if you can reach and connect to what's beneath the floor, this posture is going to have a lot more power, a lot more energy. As always, when we're on our hands and feet together, there's a lot of freedom. You can take it side to side, forward, back, changing the placement of your feet and hands entirely. <sighs> Occupy your body. And start to walk the hands gently backwards towards the feet. As your hands get closer to the feet, Less and less weight is supported by the upper body and more and more in the lower body. Essentially, that's energy flow. So eventually, you're just hanging from your, your waist up. Your head is dangling. You grab your arms to all of the weight. So the focus of energy is in the legs. <sighs> Imagine for a moment that down is up. The center of the earth is up. Let gravity pull you up. Opening up the backside of your legs and your backside. Breathe. Cover more ground. Let's go to the left. You're still hanging up. You're just changing the angle that you're bending so that the, the medicine the energy flow that's moving through your body can get to the sides of you. Ah, cleaning out. Good. Feel the journey from the left to the right or the right to the left. Your awareness is your body's bath. Your breath 
is your body's bath. And let gravity bring you back to the center. We're gonna keep rolling with this inversion of thinking of down is up, up is down. So let's stand down, slowly, rounding. Down is up, up is down. Just playing with it. We wanna just soften our normal perception. Good. Let gravity pull you up as you stand. Let the hands float to the hips. Making that connection there, your hands are flashlights of awareness in your body. So where your hands go, your awareness goes. Take a moment to let your awareness flood the hips area and the space between your hands, like the pelvic bowl. And Mula Bandha, which is the pelvic floor muscle, we're gonna flex. And then as we start to offer the pelvis forward, but we require the legs to stay straight. Something begins to happen. Something starts to open in that space between the hands. That's what the, uh, the headline of this posture is. It's like you're opening up the main central channel at the base and starting to turn the gaze up. Don't be shy, but also don't be too hard. You want to find a nice balance and yet go for it. <laughs> Let the... Let that energy really open you up now. Don't be afraid of it. It's powerful stuff. Your legs are strong and powerful supports. As we start to come back to the center, we're in no hurry. It's important to come back to neutral in a gentle fashion. Let your arms relax at your sides. There's so much energy that we have access to at all times. It's just that the valves have been closed. So you want to imagine every posture in a way is like opening the valves again. So that your body really starts to tap that energy that's all around us and through us. Underneath us, above us. Hmm. So this next one is kind of like plugging into the earth. When you start to sit down, you let your knees start to bend. You can feel the energy instantaneously. If you, want to, if you want it hot, sit down low. If you want it more on the warm side, go higher up. Find your place somewhere in there. And before we do anything with the arms, just make friends with the energy of sitting. Hmm. So if we're plugging into the earth and the energy is coming into our bodies, I want you to just sort of feel it overflow out through the arms in whatever way that you choose to express that. So it can be that holding the ball version if you like that, which is more of a, of a building of the energy within. You can let your arms reach up to the sky, more of a channeling it up or forward or back. How can we hold an active posture which has a lot of an energy but stay completely relaxed, totally calm? And the legs begin to straighten, the arms start to fall again at our sides. Our 
limbs are falling up. And now what we're feeling in our body now is the feeling of the energy we just generated, literally like food, nourishment. And now we're digesting it. Let's go into the second round and refine it a little bit. So we start by one ingredient at a time. Just sit into the earth. How much flavor do you want there? Then we're going to refine it by letting the heel start to get lighter. So that means your weight is being distributed more focused in the balls of the feet. And as the heels go higher, you can go as high as you like, more into the toes. Good, so you got the same amount of energy coming through a smaller opening there. So beautiful, yeah, it's nice and strong. And you just let that really open and dilate the feet, which are so often cramped and squished. We want them to just open up and breathe and then stay on the balls of the feet, straightening the legs at the same time and channel the reach down to the sky. <laughs> just gonna keep playing with that inversion of our perception. Your arms are reaching towards the sky. Like something else is doing this. We're just going with it. Something bigger than us is reaching us. Good. Let the heels slowly return to the ground. And once the heels soften land, we're going to make a whole journey downward towards the earth, but take your time. It's actually pretty fascinating, especially as you, as your hips drop below your knees. There's a point at which you can release your weight into this leg shape and let your low back go. A good time to just stay with Mula Banda. Again, pelvic floor muscle, engage it. Feel what that's like, and then relax it. If you're not sure how to do that, if you've ever had to go to the bathroom really bad, but you gotta hold it, this is the muscle that essentially we're engaging to hold it. It also happens to be the same muscle in, involved in the orgasm, so it, it includes that energy. That when we engage Mula Banda, we are essentially tapping that really awesome root vital energy that brought us into this world. But we're going to go up one floor, so to speak, by dropping back to the seat. And that takes the energy out of the base and starts to channel it just up one, one level if we think of it in the way of the chakras. Think of the second chakra below the navel. Let your focus be there. And we're, we're able to hold this form not as an act of muscles flexing, but as energy gathering, a very different way of seeing it. Energy is gathering at your core. Now, if you're friends with that and you're open to the idea of just turning it up a notch, all you got to do is lean back a little bit. Sometimes it goes hand in hand with the feet leaving the ground, floating off the ground. And even from there, you can go so far as straight legs. Mm. Try not to think of it as lifting your legs as much as shooting your legs outward in the direction of your feet. Nice breath. Good. And we'll slowly, gradually come back, feet to the floor again, arms to the legs so that the, the 
core can soften. And just feel the emanations of that. So it's a different concept of strength where we think of strength as something that we're doing. I want you to think of strength as something that happens. Very different approach. So you're not doing this per se. You're just allowing the strength that exists in your core to come to the foreground. So let's come up off the, the uh, arms around the legs. They, they leave the legs and then we lean back a little bit until the feet can float up. And you're just introducing enough of the intensity, enough of the heat to still feel smiley inside. No furrowed brows, soft, relaxed space. Strength happens. Good. Now let the, the feet return to the floor again. Arms are going to come to the legs. The core softens again. Yet something remains. Even when the muscles are not flexed anymore, something remains. The core is in our mind. <clears throat> and this is helping us really, really get that, that uh, core. It's like gathering your core. The way a planet comes together from dust. Arms leave the legs. One last round here. Enjoy. And I want you to feel free to just move about as you please. You can keep it still and just bask in this or, or, or explore what are the possibilities here. How much can I move while also having very strong core? Legs are free. Arms are free. This is the marriage of fluidity and strength. Oftentimes we think of strength as rigid, stiff forceful and we're bringing fluidity and strength effort and strength those two have been married too now we're going to think of effortless strength good now we're going to stay with this just a little longer let the feet return to the floor our next stop is to lay down, if possible, without the help of the arms. This allows us to kiss the tippy top of the core. Oh. Right there under the back. And then driving the heels into the ground is the act of thrusting the pelvis to the sky. Every time we do that pelvic thrust, it's a silent oomph. The sky can feel. It's the difference between making a shape and making a statement. The difference between our ego doing the posture and our soul doing the posture. back return to the floor as soon as the lowest part of your back meets the ground it kind of reverses and one last time we turn on our core gravity turn into a nice little planet curl in on yourself even use the arms around the legs at first and then once you're in a nice tight ball let your arms float off the legs and let gravity hold you together your internal gravity but surrounded in relaxed breath Beautiful. Yeah. <clears throat> Good. And then we 
things start to unravel again. <clears throat> Drive your heels into the earth, but this time, let your heels leave the ground so your, your pelvis gets up a little bit higher. See if you can scooch the, the heels of your hands right under your pelvis with your fingers wrapped around the sides there. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> as long as that's okay with you. Yeah. But essentially, your forearms are playing the role of the pillars now. If the, if the pelvis is the ceiling, your forearms are the pillars. And that way, you can just stay right here enjoying that or even send a leg up too to the sky. Either one. Anytime you reach a leg or an arm, find the source of that reach, the origin of that reach, and focus there. And then swapping the mound gracefully, you can even do it midair. Where one foot can rise before the other foot even lands as an option. Can we do both at the same time? Say again. Can we do both at the same time? You can do both at the same time as long as the support's there. Beautiful, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and don't let the, the feet return to the floor. Smoothly as you can, remove the pillars. Pelvis drops to the floor. We're gonna turn on core gravity again, but this time with the arms, and then go right into what I call mobilizing the core, which is simply rolling back and forth. But if you know, if you watch, <clears throat> it's the core that's doing it. So this helps us begin to sense just how amazing the core is and how capable the core is. The martial arts understands this so well. Good. Also happens to be a nice massage on the musculature parallel to the spine. Give yourself that massage. The next time we roll up, we're going to attempt to use the momentum to plant the hands and hop back into an upper push-up. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and holding the earth at arm's length. Try to drop the butt until it's uh, in line. So imagine your shoulders, hips, and heels all in a straight line. If that's a lot for your upper body to bear, just drop to the knees. Either way, we want to lower to the ground. Come all the way down this first time, at least, and point the toes. Without actually pushing on the floor with the hands, we're just drawing the head and the chest up bit by bit by bit until we can feel a nice even squeeze from the base of your cranium down the spine to your tailbone. No crimping. And then when you breathe, breathe right into your heart. Hmm. Strength happens. Take the effort out of it. And let the right ear meet the floor. Let the hand sweep down at your sides. Palms face up totally. Surrender to gravity. It's like a hug. <sighs> Good. We start off the next round in the same way. Hands kind of to the sides of the shoulders-ish. Elbows in at your sides. Toes pointed. You can scooch the hands back a little bit from there to get the proper leverage to then add the push-up. So this t second time around, on your hands or your wrists, we're going to press down until we're curved up. So notice what's happening in, in the core area, the back, the, the tummy, all of that, and the kind of pleasant tightness that uh, takes place there. And we want to use that to float the butt to the sky, almost like a you got a really strong helium, helium balloon tied to your tailbone. And that's bringing you up. And then it pops, and you land on your hands and your feet again. Uh, resting on your bones, head hanging in gravity. We're going to 
choose the left leg today to pick that left foot off the ground. Start with a bent leg just to get the hip opening so that left leg floats upward until it feels wonderful. Be very conscious of how you're directing your energy in the remaining three limbs, your two arms and your right leg. If that feels good, then you can even beam that leg outward, again, from the origin. The origin of your reach is not a specific physical location, it's more energetic. Imagine you've got the sun in your belly and your leg is just an offshoot of light. When we step this foot forward, it can be tempting to throw it forward, but we want to float it nice and controlled and smooth towards where the hands are and let that foot land wherever it does. So it may not be super far forward, that's okay. We're going to press against the earth with that arched left leg and float up. Watch the energetics, how the weight distribution is transferring from that front leg and into the back leg until we're upright. From here, you can widen the stance if you like. You can scooch that right foot, foot further back, left foot forward. Find a stance that you're happy with. We've got a number of things going on with the opening of the front of the right hip. This left leg is, is performing more of an arch support. The right leg is more of a pillar support. Feel the difference between the two of them, but yet they feel equal. Engaging Mula Banda at the pelvic floor. A deep breath. First, relaxing your arms into gravity. And then, as if out of the earth to the sky, we want those arms to just go. Let the reach come from beneath you. You want the energy of the pose to be bigger than the physical pose. And then the arms are going to fall back into gravity. Almost lazy, floppy. You want to re roll that right hip back. This is a really profound opening, actually. Since your feet essentially stay in the same orientation, if you start to roll your hip towards your right and face towards your right, or what was your right, you're gonna feel the inner hips start to open up, and that in itself is a good dose. We just wanna be with that for a moment. If you've ever been eating a meal and you're already dishing up the next bite before you even finish chewing and swallowing the bite you're on. Yoga is kind of like that too. Oftentimes we throw on the next ingredient. We never even really tasted the one that's already happening. So once we've really got a sense of this, then we start to grow the arms outward again as though they are weightless rays of light. Don't lift your arms, beam your arms. That means the shoulders can relax. Yeah. Energy is flowing out like that. Good. Shoulders are all relaxed. If you ever feel any kind of tension anywhere, a nice little uh, technique is to let your arms just move fluidly. Even do, even do the wave. <laughs> Let your, make sure your arms and shoulders, none of it is stiff. So when you come back to still, it's still fluid. Then that right hand's gonna start to gravitate towards the right leg. But the headline really is what's happening in your hips, especially your left hip, as that right hand gets closer to your right leg. Feel that opening there. And then the left arm fountains to the sky. Essentially the same pose with a different take, a different angle, different openings. Beautiful. The way a, a plant or a flower takes in the sunlight when it's overhead, that's, that's what you want to imbue this posture with. Like you're getting something from above you, and yet you're rooted in the ground beneath you. You're, then we're going to let the hands unite behind the back, if possible, they clasp. 
Sometimes the shoulders aren't happy with that, in which case you can take opposite wrists, forearms, elbows. But if they can clasp, clasp them, get a nice opening in the shoulders. Inhale, lengthen. Before we try this on the other side, we just want to fall forward as if to go inside that left leg. Oh, let the head drop into gravity, squeezing your arms forward. <laughs> Lots of flavor. The posture is the meal. Your breath is your tongue, is your soul's tongue tasting everything. <sighs> Savoring. The hands separate and meet the floor, shoulder distance apart to either side of that left foot. The hands are gonna take over so that that left foot can float back next to the right and we're right back in that plank position, which is really a powerful pose. Feel that strength for a moment. It's like your two arms united as a force field against the earth. Just wanna let that generate and build for a little bit. On or off the knees, let's drop closer to the earth. Now this time you can go all the way down or if you wanna just really let it cook a bit. Stay hovering just above the floor and roll to the tops of the feet from there. Open it up into Upward Dog, and then round it into Pyramid. Feeling your body's weight supported by your four limbs, turn it to three limbs by bringing the right foot off of the ground, but very much design the remainder of your foundation. See if you can channel it so that none of the limbs are overtaxed. With control, we're floating that foot high and far forward. When I say far, that's just wherever your foot lands. Left heel drops to the ground. Yes. Good. When you rise, slow it down and really notice the mechanisms at work. The higher we go, the more that left leg becomes our support until it's equal between right and left. A deep breath to relax, moving a little quicker now because we know what's up. And we're gonna beam the arms up to the sky. Good. Now find the coherence, the cohesiveness. Relax and shine. Arms surrender to gravity's pull. Left hip rotates back. We open up the inner hips and we enjoy that for a moment. Arms emanate outward. Maybe this time take some creative freedoms. The palms don't have to face down. They could just as well face up or out or even two different directions. Arms could even bend. Play a little bit now. So if this is your design and anything goes, how would you like to shape it? Take that same basic foundation, the right leg bent straight, le left leg straight, and we're gonna go backwards. Open up the valves, down towards that right hip. Good, so there's that, it's kind of like a fountaining to the sky and yet being showered on at the same time. It's the same energy. Giving is receiving is giving is receiving. Up is down, in is out, out is in. Softening the rigid confines of how we were trained to be in our bodies. 
Good, let's clasp the hands behind our backs. Fall inside that right leg, squeeze the arms forward. Find the smile inside that heart center. Eyes rolling back in the head. Hands can separate and plant either side of the foot. We're gonna float that right foot back next to the left. Again, last time, we're just gonna hold the earth at arm's length and feel that awesome energy that starts to build between your chest and the floor. When the elbows bend, they bend back and it can really cook if you stay hovering. And then curve, roll into an upward dog one last time. <laughs> yeah. Downward dog. Send that left leg beaming to the sky, big inhale. And then sliding the knee through onto the shin or the side of the leg. The most important part is that first entry. We don't want to slam the hip. We want to enter this room in the temple <clears throat> practically tiptoe. And once you're settled there on your base, we take that extra moment to press on the ground. This gives us an upward dog-like curve in the spine. Let the breath come all the way into your low back and pelvis. And then as we melt forward, imagine it from the bottom of your torso on up from there. Yeah. Oh. Maximus, but those are just the labels. What is the feeling? You think of your physical body as a reflection, but instead of being a reflection that you see, it's a reflection that you feel. What is that reflection pointing back to? So everything that you that appears in your body, sense sensual-wise, is showing you something that's deeper than the sensation itself. It's a reflection, an aspect of you on a deeper level. And that's what intimacy is, intimacy with the self, to be brave enough to really meet yourself. That's what it's about. Good. Remember, it's not the end of the posture, but a continuation, a morphing as we back away with the help of the hands. A lot can happen in the movement back. Turn that right foot so that the toes are supporting bottom of your toes and your two hands. So you've got three supports to draw that left foot off the ground, left leg off the ground. Place it softly next to the right, and let's just switch it up. That right arm, right leg's gonna be. Right knee sliding forward. Take your time like it really matters. There's no exact right way. It's just that if you enter with care, it can't not be right. 
I'm going to press on the floor and lengthen first. Big inhale. And melting down from the bottom to the top. Just a little bit of tip, by the way, to your left or to your right can actually make a pretty huge difference. I call this scanning. So you take the posture, we usually default to one position, but then if we start to see what's on the left and what's on the right and start to break out of that, that's called scanning, scanning your options. And then usually, oftentimes, there's a sweet spot. It's a place where your body is kind of drawn to zero in on. Trust that and hang out and be open to that changing as well. Mm. Your body is extremely intelligent beyond what we can really even understand, but we can trust it intuitively. Intuition is just divine intelligence outside of the normal confines of our mind. Our body is tapped into that. Good. This time we exit a slightly different way by dropping into that right hip and swinging that left leg from behind us to in front of us. And we we're already complete today, so we're just going to end it like we began. Connect to yourself at the beginning of class and just see if you can't feel the shifts that have taken place in your body in terms of how you feel. To be aware of the shift is a lot of what brings you back. Brings you back to the practice that is. And while there's a deep aspect of ourself that's deeply ingrained that almost wants to avoid getting lighter, it wants to avoid healing, it wants to avoid feeling, there is that track running. Far more overwhelming is the part of us that wants to feel amazing and wants to feel good. <clears throat> but there is, a, there is a, a battle a little bit within each of us. And so remembering that that choosing continues outside of this room keep choosing be aware that there's a there's an underminer be aware that there's a sabotager be aware that everybody that's just the nature of coming into this world but to be aware of it empowers us to put it in its place and keep choosing that expansion and healing thriving Yoga is just remembering that. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Namaste. 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 You're welcome.